Hello, fellow book lovers, both readers and writers. I am Maddie Dalrymple. I'm the author of the Anne Kinnear Suspense Novels and Suspense Shorts and the Lizzie Ballard Thrillers. And I also write, speak, and consult on the writing craft and the publishing voyage as the indie author. And I share what I learn each week on the Indie Author Podcast. And you can find out more about me and my work at maddiedalrymple.com. That's Maddie with a Y, M-A-T-T-Y. And at the indieauthor.com. And that's indie with a Y, I-N-D-Y. And in this video series, what I learned, I ask authors two questions related to their latest book. What did they learn from that book that they'd like to share with their fellow authors? And what did they learn from their latest book that they'd like to share with their fellow readers? And I am here today with Chad Boudreaux. Hey, Chad, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good morning. To give our viewers a little bit of background on you before we begin, before serving as the executive vice president and chief legal officer of the nation's largest military shipbuilder, Chad Boudreau served as the deputy chief of staff for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, where he served as an advisor to Secretary Michael Chertoff. Before working for Homeland Security, Boudreau served at the U.S. Justice Department, focusing on matters related to terrorism and homeland security. And in fact, he was hired the night before the September 11th attacks. His career in the government led him to write his debut novel, Scavenger Hunt, which came out in January of 2023. And today I am asking Chad the two what I learned questions about the book, starting with what did you learn from Scavenger Hunt that you'd like to share with your fellow authors? Well, thank you for having me, first of all. I, the first thing I would say about in answer to your question is don't give up. And you hear that a lot. There's the writing community, particularly for first-time authors, can be one that requires a lot of coping mechanisms and a support group, but I would say that it's definitely worth it. So keep going, and you will be discouraged if you're a human being like the rest of us, but but just don't give up because when you get to the back end, when, when your book, when your story gets published, when it gets out into the world, it's it creates a buzz within your community, hopefully beyond that community, that is worth it. And so that would be my first lesson learned from writing a book. It took me 18 months over 20 years to write my first book. It took me nine months to write my second book. So there is a learning curve that is flattened. I think once you get that first one out of the way, at least it was for me. That's so also that, interesting um, as a project manager in my former life, that idea of the time invested versus the duration over which you invested. That's a perspective that you don't often hear because a lot of people say, oh, I spent five years on my first book. And I think in our minds, we think, oh, five solid years of writing a book. And that's hardly ever the case. So it's interesting to hear that perspective on it. Yeah. And for me, it's not my day job. So maybe one day it will be, but now I have a full-time job. And so my writing is extracurricular for me. So I have to be very disciplined with my time and I think that would be the second point I would make to other authors that are trying to figure it out is discipline is, is required and don't fool yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to wake up every day and write 2000 words over a course of 90 minutes. It would be great if you could do that, but it does mean that you have to have some type of pattern where you're writing. And it, that's, that's my observation. And it certainly is the case for me. I have to be able to sit down Usually at the same place, it doesn't have to be the same place, but I have to sit down at a certain period of time and that's when my mind functions the best. And, and then I think the concomitant takeaway from that is don't be discouraged if you don't get anything on paper. You still have not wasted 90 minutes watching a movie on Netflix that you're going to forget next week, right? You've at least, your your mind is at least focused on something that's worthwhile for that time. I wanted to go back to the keep going piece of advice. Is there something, if you had like one tip to share with people beyond seeing what's coming, you kind of suggested the idea of picturing what you're working toward, but do you have another tip you'd like to share about how to keep going when the going gets tough? Yeah, I, I just think that having having a pattern where you're not going to get discouraged is key. So I had a friend of mine who read my first few drafts and they were they were terrible. And, but because I just started writing, I was a legal writer, which I thought that was, that was something I was trained to do. I had taken some creative writing courses, but I didn't start out writing good fiction. And I had certain people that would tell me, see it through because they saw the story. If you believe in your story, I know this kind of sounds a little bit hokey, but if you believe in your story, you're really going to want to see it through. And for me, I think understanding that if I fail to get anything on the paper, that day, it was not a failure of a day. It was actually a productive day because I, I focused my mind on it and it's going to reap rewards the day after the day after that. So that would be the main thing. The other thing I think in seeing it through is the actual 
process of writing the book. The good news about writing fiction is there are no rules. The bad news for somebody like me is there's no structure either unless you create it yourself. And I had to have some kind of infrastructure to keep sane. And so for me, infrastructure was I thought about doing somewhat of an outline. I thought about doing 50 chapters, 2,000 words a chapter to hit me at 100,000 words. That's not that's not sacrosanct, but it is it is my goal. And when I have a goal like that, then it gives me the ability to see it through, right? To, at the end of the week, take stock and say, hey, I at least got 2,000 words, or maybe I got 10, but at least I'm working towards a recognizable goal in a world with no rules. Yeah, I'm just working on my first novella, and yesterday was the most productive writing day I have ever had, because I think finally a whole bunch of ideas that had been percolating for a long time came together. And I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And at the end of the day, I used Scrivener. So I thought, I'm going to go see how many words I got. It's got to be thousands and thousands. And it was only a couple of hundred because I realized a lot of what I was doing was taking out all my notes that said, and then something happened. I wonder what it is. It could be this or it could be this. Here are the pros and cons of each because that's how I write. And I'd replaced all those like placeholders with actual stuff. So there was this moment of thinking, oh, I wasn't as productive as I thought. And then I, I had to say, no, it's just that, that a piece of software doesn't capture the doubt. true nature of creative output just by counting words. Hey, Maddie, there's another, I think, good principle that I, I would share with, with writers. And that is there is kind of a... I first thought it was a rite of passage. It was like, you really have to get turned down a hundred times before somebody really takes stock in what you're doing. That's certainly the case with me. I got turned down a lot and I kept going and I kept going and I was, and I was perseverant, but I did learn that over that time, it's more than just a rite of passage. You're actually learning how to write better. You, you, You may not think that you may think that what you have right in front of you is perfect and it doesn't need to be altered in any way. But my first few drafts compared to my last few drafts are night and day. And it took that time period for me just to learn how to write. And that was me writing every day or most every day. And that was reading a lot too. So the writing and reading piece really helped me develop my trade craft. I'm going to use that comment about reading a lot as a sort of a transition to the second part of the question, which is, what did you learn from your latest book that you'd like to share with your fellow readers? And I'm specifically going to ask you, do you intentionally read in your own genre or do you intentionally read outside your genre or do you just read whatever is interesting to you at the moment without really structuring it? I'll give you a lawyer's answer, both. Okay. I do aim for I do aim for my genre of book, which is really just, I've got a political thriller here. It's got a good national security hook to it. It meets well with my background. But my second book is just a traditional thriller. It has nothing to do with spy, the spy world. But So I just like thrillers. And when I think about things that, as it relates to the readers, I, I want a book that's entertaining to me. And I don't want a book, when I'm reading fiction, I really don't want a whole lot of agenda behind the book. I, I, want, I want to be entertained. And so I... I focus more on what's the nature of the story. Now, I do, in addition to reading spy thrillers and, and general thrillers, I like to branch out and and read some literary fiction. And then also just biographies are, are very important to me and in other history as well. And what do you think you're drawing from the biography as a writer? Characters. So the character of a person and a very fulsome character at that. So and when we read the political headlines or watching news clips, everything is aimed at like 20 second bites and and we don't get the full and there's always some kind of bent to it. When you read a book about somebody, let's just say uh, maybe a controversial figure, John Adams, you learn on the one hand that he was a very devout guy and he was, he was very stubborn. But on the other hand, you also see that he had the wherewithal to say, I'm going to represent British people who were enemies against the state because our jurisprudence and our justice system in the United States demands that we do that. And so it's a fulsome character that whether you agree with him or not, it's hard to disagree with him on everything and agree with him on everything. And in a world where everything's binary, I think reading really good biographies understand that human beings are more complicated to that than that. And the and the issues that we have to address are more complicated than we make them. I have to just put in a shameless plug for one of my favorite episodes of the Indie Author Podcast, which was with Ben Winters, who wrote The Last Policeman, um, Golden State. 
underground airlines, many other things. And it's called the bothness of compelling characters. And and we talked about that very topic that it's boring to have a villain who's just bad and it's boring to have a hero who's just good. And that that applies to every character, not just the protagonist and the antagonist. Any other thoughts you'd like to share about what you learned from Scavenger Hunt that you'd like to share with your fellow readers? Yeah. So one of the books that I really love is On Writing by Stephen King, just in terms of how to write a really good book. Get rid of all your adverbs, which helped me get my book from like 115,000 to under 100. Shame. That's just <laughs> That's funny. But it really improved the quality of the writing. But then he also said something that I thought was, again, I use the word hokey, and I, I usually don't respond well to hokey, but he said in the book that your characters will take on a life of their own. And I understand you're the writer. You're going to be writing that. After writing Scavenger Hunt, I realized that's the truth. And, and really, actually, actually writing my second book, it became even more prevalent. I, I will write an outline and I will have these characters that I believe are, are that I understand them. And when I put them in a very uh, extraordinary situation, in a, in a box full of tension, I don't always know what they're going to do and how they're going to climb out of that. And so uh, both of my books, I've had my really good characters turn my story on its head and it's made for a better ending. So I, 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 I sit here knowing that I am the author, knowing that I'm not into some kind of crazy spellboundness, but it's, but I do know that I don't know where my mind's going to take my characters. So I love that. So great. Well, Chad, thank you so much for talking about the things you learned from Scavenger Hunt. And please let the viewers and listeners know where they can go to find out more about you and Scavenger Hunt online. Yes. So I'm at www.chadboudreau.com. So you can check me out there and, and stay in touch. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. This was so interesting.